So guys, today I've got a very special video for you. I decided to make and give to you a fully functioning, flexible and easy to use NPC dialogue system. We have a fully blueprinted system, no behavior trees, no messing around, a fully flexible system. This system can be used on 1 million NPCs, all with different conversations, events and settings. No extra blueprinting, no duplicating files. Triggering events from your conversations has never been so easy. Change the UI with a few button clicks. Multiple ways of initiating conversation. Player responses are constantly updated based on the responses given. And most importantly, it's simple and easy to use. So why am I giving out this dialogue system for free? Well, you guys have been awesome at supporting me, so I wanted to give something back to you lot. So I've got a few options for you guys, but before I get into them, I wanted to ask you if you could drop a sub to my channel and drop a like on this video. It really supports me producing this kind of content and we're on our way to 10k subs, so if you could join the team, that would be awesome. Okay, let's get into these options. So option one is to download the entire system. This is download one in the video description. If you just want to try out the system and play around with it, then this option is great. But if you're looking to integrate the system into your own project and get a real understanding of how it works, I'd recommend option two. So option two is to join me and we'll implement the system into your project together. This option won't take you long and you'll have a full understanding of how the system works and it will be nicely integrated into your current project. To do this, I need you to click the tutorial link one in the description. This will take you to the part one tutorial of the system. So just quickly follow the tutorial then come back to this tutorial and we'll finish up. Don't worry, the first tutorial is really quick and it just introduces you to the different camera settings you can use when interacting with NPCs. So if you're following option two and you have now watched part one of the system, let's begin into this tutorial. So the first thing I need you guys to do is to hop into the video description, click on the download to link and download the files. When these are downloaded, hop into your file explorer and paste them into your project content folder. Find your NPC blueprint and double click to open it up. Now I'm gonna ask you to hop into the video description again and click on the nodes one link. This will take you to this page and what I want you to do is simply copy all these nodes the same way you would on Unreal, then jump back into your project and press Control V to paste them into our NPC event graph. When they're inside, right click the NPC chat variable and click create. Then do the same for the conversation info variable. When you've created the conversation info variable, check the instance editable box. Now move up to our activate dialogue event. Hold D and click to bring in a delay. Then after this, we're gonna call our begin chat event. Plug these into the line. On our pasted in nodes, let's copy our player controller, show mouse cursor and set movement nodes. Then over by our player adjustments event, paste these nodes in and connect them up. Delete the set movement and bring in a disable movement node. This will just stop us from running off after we begin our conversation. Set show mouse cursor to true and on our begin play when creating our widget, select the NPC dialogue widget. So my friends, now we just need to do two things before you can use the system. Quickly hop into the NPC dialogue widget jump into the event graph, go down to where it says end conversation and bring in the end chat event again. Delete the old end chat and connect the new one in. Now hop into your content page, drag an NPC into the level and look in the details section. This is where you'll write your conversation and change the conversation settings. So you write your NPC's message in the NPC message field. Then you add four array elements into the responses field and you type in your various responses to the first message. Always add four responses, but leave the responses blank that you don't want to use. Then for each button, you need to pick the outcome. So you can select a message to be taken to that message or you can select an event such as goodbye to end the conversation. And finally, if you want to use player responses, you tick the question box. If you leave it blank, no responses will appear and you have to click on the screen to move on to the next message. Once you've set up these messages and settings for each message, you're done. So let me go through a super quick example. 
So for the NPC message one, I'm just gonna put hello. Then I'm gonna add four responses and put hello in my first box. Then I'm gonna tell the program that message one button one should take us to message two. And then I'm gonna enable player responses by ticking questions. Now I'm done with message one, I'm gonna move down to message two. So for the NPC message, I'm gonna put goodbye. Then I'm gonna add four responses and put goodbye in my first response box. Then I'm gonna tell the program that message two button one should call the goodbye event. And I'm gonna tick the questions bool. So this was a really, really simple example with just two layers of message, but that is literally it. You just keep going for all your other messages. Now at current, the messages go three layers deep and we have two events our buttons can take us to. For anyone who wants to add more layers or would like to learn more about how the system works, keep watching and we'll go through it. Okay, so jump back into our NPC. So what we've pasted in is a begin chat and end chat. The begin chat brings up our conversation widget and passes over the conversation we set inside the NPC details to the widget. Then our end chat just reverts all the camera and show mouse or cursor settings back to normal. So our begin chat will trigger and our widget will appear after we interact with the NPC. Now let's hop into our content browser. So what I gave you earlier was the dialog widget called NPC dialog, two images which are used inside the widget and a struct and an enum. So let's double click to open up the enum. This enum is basically a list of names and in this system we are using the enum to keep track of what message we are on and what outcome we want each button click to trigger. Then back onto our content browser, we also have a struct. And a struct, just like the enum, is a list, but a list of variables instead of names. So you saw this inside our NPC detail section. Here we're setting the conversation. Here we're telling each button where they should take us for each message. And here we change our question ball to either show our player responses or to hide them and wait for a click to move on to the next message. Okay, back onto the content browser now the actual dialog widget itself. So double click to open it up. In the design, we have four buttons, each with a text over the top. Then we have a text inside an image for the NPC message. So if you don't like the layout or want larger response boxes, you can change the images I've used and move the messages around. Okay, now jumping into the event graph. So the system works in two parts. We have the player response button clicks, which trigger different events based on what the button is set to trigger in the NPC detail section. And we have our events here on the right. These events can change our NPC message and player responses text based on what messages we set up in the NPC detail section, or they can trigger events which we've blueprinted in the NPC. So let's take a look at our button one. When we click button one, we check which message we are currently on then we check in our conversation settings where we told the button to take us, and then we fire off that event. As for the events, they're pretty self-explanatory. In total, I've set the system up to be able to call five events, but you can add any kind of event you want in here. So the end conversation ends the conversation by calling the end chat event inside the NPC. The quest event is gonna be in my upcoming quest tutorial after this one, and we have three message events. So for each message event, we're simply taking the conversation we set in the NPC detail section and applying it to the NPC message and player response text boxes. If our question bool is set to false, we will hide all our buttons and disable them. And if a text box is blank, we'll hide that text box and disable that specific button. And very lastly, we have our on mouse button down function. If our question is set to false and our response boxes are hidden, when we click on the screen, we will load in our next message. This means you don't always have to have player responses and you can just have the NPCs talking to you. And that is all the blueprinting. Pretty easy, right? Now, how do we add an additional message layer or event onto the system? Well, first, let's jump into our conversation options enum. Add a new name, call it message4, and move it up to the other messages. Back into the content browser, jump into our NPC chat struct. Now we need to create another row for message four. So click new variable and add the following variables with the following names. Now back into our content browser, let's jump into our NPC dialog. Move our quest and end conversation nodes down and then select all of message three 
and press Ctrl W to duplicate it. Call the custom event, go to message four. Now swap our NPC message, responses and question over to our message four version. Now let's move our buttons down and pull the button one comment further down. Duplicate our message three, enum and branch, then set the enum to message four and connect the branch in coming off the message freeze false. Then let's duplicate all our message free nodes and plug the first branch in coming off the message four branches true. Now we need to swap over our struct information from message free button one to message four button one. And now we've added another message we can go to. We also need to add this event in. So let's move our quest and end combo down. Let's duplicate our message to enum and branch Connect the struct input into this and connect this branch into the line. As we're already on message four, we either want to be taken to message one, two, or three. And as you can see, we've already got message one and two. So let's set our enum to message three and bring in the go to message three event coming off the branches true. So that's leaving message four done but now we need to get to message four. So moving up to message three, let's move our quest and goodbye down and let's duplicate our message and branch. Connect it up from the struct and slot the branch into the line. Set the message to message four and then off the branch is true, call the go to message four event. Now we can copy this line and do the same for our message two and message one. So for message two, move our quest and conversation down Paste in our new line, connect it into the struct, select message four and plug the branch in. Now message one, move quest and combo down, paste it in, connect it into the struct, select message four and slot our branch in. Now you're gonna hate me for saying this, but now you need to do the other three buttons just like we did this one, adding on our message four. Everything is exactly the same as what we just did, except you use button two message four, button three message four, button four message four, instead of button one. So yes, adding a new layer to the system is quite a lot of copy and paste work, but let me tell you something which may make you feel a bit better. If the system wasn't blueprinted this way, for each NPC conversation you want, you'd have to program an entire behavior tree. With this system, once you've added in the amount of layers you want, you won't have to go back to the blueprint ever again, you're done with it. So guys, that is it for me. If you liked the video, please do drop a like, comment and subscribe, or even better, support me on Patreon or buy my Marketplace asset. Thank you guys so much for watching, I'll see you next time.